When I was 10 years old, in 1960, during the Kennedy-Nixon election, I remember running up to my father and saying, Daddy, Daddy, are we Republicans or are we Democrats? And he bent down and said, neither, son. We're conservative. Years later, I realized that we're fiscal conservatives and socially liberal by the standards of Texas in the 60s. That combination just felt moderate. We avoided the extremes of either side of the Republican or Democratic parties, and it felt reasonable and practical. Then in school, we were taught the Founding Fathers created the new world of liberty and justice, freedom and equality, and that's what democracy meant. That's what made America great. By the time I was in college, truth had set in. Those inalienable rights didn't include all men and no women. But our allegiance to America and its democracy was still alive because slowly but surely, we were creating a more perfect union. Both parties stood for the founding principles. Sometimes the parties were alike in many ways, but for decades now, our political system has been at odds with itself. Republicans and Democrats pushing and pulling each other further apart to opposite extremes that wind up canceling each other out we're a divided nation now, dysfunctional nation. Republicans and Democrats polarized, hating each other. And millions of people don't even like what their party stands for. But the extremism we perceive in the other party, we absolutely hate. I'll tell you why, why I think anyway, I learned it after school. The last great aha came to me when it became clear that politics is a game played by politicians politicos, the media who don't necessarily want to win. I mean, they just want to keep on playing the game. It's a business. Stay in office as long as you can. Negative campaigns, news reporting aimed at just getting more eyes and advertisers, we're being played. A divided house that cannot stand. Then COVID came along and we weren't ready for it. It's, in my opinion, our polarized parties that are to blame for why we weren't ready. And while we're at the, at this point, small businesses are going bankrupt. The middle class is more endangered than ever. And people are dying, living in fear. We're not going to be able to spend our way out of this and expect business to go on as usual. Eventually, we'll get back to normal, but it won't be a new normal. It wouldn't have been this way if our politics hadn't been polarized. We've got to fix our political system. The American democracy that I was taught in school, I still believe in. Any disillusionment along the way didn't make me lose my belief in my country. My vote still counts. But it's the money part that's the problem. The political industry is based on money and power. My campaign contributions just go to party politics. Negative campaigns that wind up canceling each other out ad campaigns, smear campaigns. Both sides are guilty, and I guess that makes me guilty too. But I'm not playing this game anymore. I don't want to be associated with it. I don't want to throw good money to bad campaigns that'll just be canceled out anyway. My personal cause is to save the environment. For a dozen years, Earth Day Dallas became Earth Day Texas, and today's Earth X, and it's the largest environmental gathering in the world. In Dallas, Texas, of all places, being in Dallas, it's not quite as tree hugger as it would be in New York or San Francisco. It's been inevitably a mixture of Republican and Democrat, liberal and conservative, environmentalism and con conservationism. I've learned a lot about the right and left coming together. Our first Earth Day Dallas began my new education about people joining forces. After two days and 40,000 people and 200 environmental exhibits, when the crowd had all gone and we were out in the street tearing down booths, this guy running a local chapter of an environmental organization out of DC came to me and said, Trammell, you had our booth right next to a major corporation. So I started stammering and stammering and saying, no, I'm sorry, sir, we won't let it happen again. And he said, no, no, you don't understand. We've always wanted to get to that corporation and now we know them and we're talking. And that was my first lesson that opposite sides want to collaborate. They actually want to work things out. Real people want to sit down at the same table 
a house that stands united. Well, you know, my, my first lesson really came two years before when I finally got involved in what I always believed was the foremost challenge of our times, the environment. Two business leaders in Dallas and I formed Texas Business for Clean Air, the first time the words clean and business were used together in the state of Texas. We recruited 200 of the top business leaders in Texas. And each of them were important at their own communities to fight industrial pollution. That was my first lesson. Even in Texas, business people and environmentalists can come together and solve problems. 30 top Republican and Democratic donors met on Zoom. Most of it didn't even know each other. As major donors from opposing causes and parties, we were spending millions of dollars against each other. But that day, we compared notes and realized we were just canceling each other out. Only the partisan power brokers were winning. They used almost every dollar we spend to divide ourselves. And it's legal. <laughs> it's led by the political industry, and they're, they've identified our weaknesses, and they're playing them against us. Their job's to extract money from you and me. So we pay them, and they pay us back with fake solutions, and we pay them again. Every dollar, every ad, everything we buy pays them. And hold your nose candidates is what we get from swamp and gutter politics. So our small gathering that day, we agreed that the only solutions to stop paying them we and you and five million people will declare our interdependence and come together to defund negativity and destructive campaigns. But we need you and everybody you know to come together. Five million people is the magic number in elections. 5% of the presidential vote, that's the number we need to decide every competitive election. To weed out the wackos and those who hate and choose between two problem solvers. Five million of us means four years from now, we'll have two good candidates to choose between that 70% of us will support. Money can't do it. It's up to us. And we, we, when we come together, the money will follow. Today, I'm announcing our new initiative headed by the donors at our roundtable to shift $1 billion of campaign contributions to support Five million people, people like you and me, to support candidates who just aren't ideologues, but real problem solvers, who will reach out across party lines to tackle the challenges that America faces. To tackle COVID and climate change, clean air, clean water, clean energy, economic prosperity, and energy innovation through free enterprise. To weave communities back together and fix our schools and stop overfilling our prisons to assure liberty and justice for all, and to end the outrageous spending that makes this possible. We've already started. We're building a new infrastructure to support a community of political bridge builders and problem solvers. We've got the data ready, built the models, hired all the experts, but we can't do it all. We need you. We'll begin the moment you do. When five million of us have declared our interdependence. So please, do it now. We're still Democrats and Republicans and independents. It might just stay that way, unless we have better choices. But we'll all put our country above our party. And we all want a safe environment and a healthy economy. We think that money does grow on trees, actually, and we, the people, do all the harvesting. Some of us are angry, but we're all hopeful. Idealistic, but pragmatic. And we're going to get things done. Everybody has differences, nobody's perfect. The nation's facing problems that are growing constantly, and if we don't solve them, they're gonna take us down. We feel politically homeless in a sense. We found our home, we're Americans. We're solutions oriented. There's always solutions to problems. We're not nearly as divided as we've been led to believe by the political industry. Seven out of 10 Americans are committed as ever to our nation's founding principles, even if we disagree on the details, and seven out of 10 can still disagree without hate mongering. And we can work things out together. We, the people, will face our problems and solve them together.
It took me 55 years to realize we can beat the political industry. It's threatening to destroy us. The silent majority is alive and well. It's time once again to be unsilenced. We are all in this together.